everyone and welcome back to my channel. Does this look familiar? Chests just piling up in places because you haven't set up a storage system at your base yet? Inventory issues aren't just a problem in Minecraft, they're a problem that people have been solving in different ways for thousands of years. I am currently up to my eyeballs in ore and stone, so let's talk about the ways that people have stored their stuff throughout the entirety of human existence while I build a fancy new storage area. In Minecraft, we have four main storage vessels. We have glass bottles, chests, barrels, and shulker boxes. Yes, I know that buckets exist, but they don't really stand on their own and they also don't close, so I'm not super sure they count here. We would also have bundles, but they're not in the vanilla game yet, so I'm not counting them either. We also have chests on boats, chests in minecarts, and chests on donkeys, mules, and llamas, but those are all still chests. Ender chests are also chests, it's in the name. So we're still at glass bottles, chests, barrels, and shulker boxes. Although, do, hmm, do shulker boxes count as a chest? I'm not too sure. Let me know in the comments what you think. Humans have needed to store things somewhere for basically as long as humans have been humans. In fact, as you'll see for a lot of the storage types in this video, we often don't actually know when people first made them because they are just that old. I also can't easily talk about every single type of what we call storage vessels or objects that are used to hold other objects because there are just so many of them, but I will try to cover the main ones in this video. Funnily enough, the oldest storage containers that we see in archaeology actually don't exist in Minecraft, at least not yet. Sacks, bags, and baskets are probably the earliest things that people use to carry other things, and they're so old that we actually don't have clear evidence of when the first ones were made. There is clear archaeological evidence of baskets from about 7000 BCE onwards, but baskets and sacks tend to be made from what are called organic materials, or materials that will decompose, so we often won't see them in archaeology. Baskets are usually made of plant fibers, for example, and sacks are usually made with leather or cloth, which also is usually made from plant fibers. Modern bags are often made with plastic, which really doesn't decompose, so in about 2,000 years if humans are still around, archaeologists will absolutely find loads of plastic bags. But plastic didn't exist until 1907, so most people throughout history used organic materials for their bags. But we do have evidence of pottery. Jars and pots and fancier styles like amphora have been made for thousands of years, with the earliest evidence for clay vessels dating to about 18,000 BCE in what is now China. Pottery is made from clay, and potters often mix other materials like plant fibers or stones or even bone to keep the object from breaking when it's fired. Ceramics survive a lot longer in archaeology than the plant fibers or leather that baskets and bags are made of, so we find them a lot more. These types of storage vessels can also be watertight if you need them to be, and they were sometimes sealed with beeswax to keep the liquid from seeping into the ceramics themselves. A lot of ancient pottery wasn't sealed like that though, and there are entire branches of archaeology that are dedicated to analyzing the parts of the jars that soaked up at least some of what was inside them. Because of that research, we actually know that these Roman amphora held things like wine, oil, and also a very specific type of fish paste that the Romans apparently loved. Crates are larger storage containers that are often rectangular and they either hold things like fruit or vegetables, or they can be made to hold specific oddly shaped things like bicycles. They're generally made of wood, but they can also be made of steel or plastic. Crates are another storage vessel that we really don't have clear origins for. They were so logical and so commonplace that people honestly never wrote down, hey, we invented crates today. And crates are designed to be easy to take apart and put back together again, so we can't easily look at when they first appear in archaeology and say that's when they were invented, because that is probably actually a reassembling of a number of planks from various different crates, and the original first crate to ever be created doesn't exist anymore. So far, I've talked about a lot of storage containers that we don't have in Minecraft, so let's move on to the things that we actually do have in this game. A chest is definitely among the first things that Minecraft players craft. Basically, as soon as we've decided on a base location, we make a chest and we stick everything in there that we don't need immediately. 
Chests are rectangular boxes with a hinged lid, the same as you see in Minecraft. They're usually made out of wood, but more recently they can also be made out of metal or plastic. The earliest examples that we have in archaeology date to 3500 BCE in Egypt, but again, wood doesn't survive super well in a lot of places, so these Egyptian examples aren't necessarily the first chests people ever made. Chests are great for storing lots of things, and also for storing lots of objects that might fall through the holes in a crate or a basket or even a lot of bags. Chests aren't watertight though, so storing a bucket in a chest really isn't the best idea outside of Minecraft. Barrels are another type of storage vessel that we have in Minecraft, although there is a bit of controversy and confusion about barrels. Technically, a barrel is a unit of measurement. The things that we call barrels, the hollow cylindrical containers that bulge in the middle and are held together with metal hoops, those are technically called casks. Barrels are any cask that holds a certain amount of liquid, although exactly how much liquid a barrel holds depends entirely on where you are and also which liquid you're trying to store. Basically, all barrels are casks, but not all casks are barrels. Casks are made out of wooden staves that are carved and assembled by a cooper, which literally is a person who makes casks. The staves get held in place with wooden or metal hoops, and the circular pieces that form the top and the bottom of the cask are called heads. Casks can be watertight, but they also don't have to be. You can store anything in a cask that will fit, like apples or nails or water or alcohol or oil, really just anything that will fit. But the main thing to keep in mind about casks is that they are the easiest easiest storage container to move. Hands down, like, it's not even a competition, guys. It really doesn't take that much to tip a cask onto its side, and back when I was doing museum education, I have spent many, many days showing many, many children how easy it is to roll a cask twice their size. Casks are also pretty old. We have clear archaeological evidence for them in Egypt from about 2600 BCE and 1900 BCE. And I gotta be honest, guys, casks are probably my favorite. I'm a pretty big fan of them in real life, and I'm also a really big fan of barrels in Minecraft. Craft. Decorating with barrels is one of my favorite things, and barrels with like a ladder on the side and a few chests nearby and maybe some hay bales thrown in? Yes, please. The last type of storage container I'm going to talk about, in part because it's the last real one that we have in Minecraft, and in part because there's so many other types of storage container out there that I really can't talk about them all, are glass bottles. Glass has been around for a long time, and glass vessels have been around for about as long as glass has. Glass jars are great for holding liquids or food because they usually don't have holes and they can be relatively easy to clean, although that does depend on the size of the hole. The problem with glass is that for most of history, glass has actually been pretty difficult to make until relatively recently. Ancient furnaces couldn't get hot enough to just melt sand like we do in Minecraft, and the resources that were needed to lower the melting point of the sand and to stabilize the reaction were often really difficult to get a hold of. Don't get me wrong, there is a lot of ancient glass out there. I'm actually an ancient glass specialist, so I promise you I know how much ancient glass there is out there. But glass vessels for storage weren't as common even only a few centuries ago, simply because glass was far more valuable and not really something that everyday people had lots of. So there are a lot of different ways to store things, and different people in different cultures store things in different ways. And there's one big topic that often crops up when we talk about storage, and that is the difference in storage systems between sedentary societies and nomadic societies. Just a quick reminder, sedentary means that you have your house in one place year-round, while nomadic people or groups move from place to place throughout the year. Understandably, people who move around generally have less stuff than people who don't, because carrying it from one place to another takes a lot of work. But that doesn't mean that nomadic people or groups don't have lots of stuff, it just means that they're generally very intentional with what stuff they have, because they have to move it all many, many, many times. It's also important to remember that people the world over, whether they're sedentary or nomadic, will find ways to transport and store the things that are important to them. A really good example of this is actually the Bactrian gold found at Tilyatepe in Afghanistan. Tilyatepe is a burial site, so I'm just gonna say up front that I'm not going to be showing any of the human remains, both out of respect for the individuals buried there and out of respect to anyone who is uncomfortable with seeing that sort of thing. Tilya Tepe was excavated by a Soviet Afghan team in 1978. It dates to somewhere between 100 BCE and 100 CE, and the team recovered huge numbers of objects, including a hoard of roughly 21,000 objects. That's a lot of objects. 
There were coins, there was gold jewelry, silver, ivory, all sorts of things in that hoard. And there were also six individuals who were buried at the site. As far as anybody can tell, those individuals were probably elite members or possibly even royalty of the local nomadic groups that were in the area at the time. During the various wars in Afghanistan since 1978, the horde actually went missing for a period of roughly 20 years, and there were serious concerns that it may have been sold or lost. But it turned out that the director of the National Museum of Afghanistan at the time had secretly moved the horde out of the museum and stashed it in a safe in Kabul. Only a handful of museum employees knew where it was, and they kept it secret for roughly 20 years. In 2003, when the political situation in Afghanistan had become a bit more stable, the National Museum partnered with National Geographic to open the safe. This collection actually toured the world between 2006 and 2021, and I remember seeing it on display in Ottawa when I was finishing my undergraduate degree. There's a lot of really amazing stuff in this hoard, but the piece that I want to bring up here is this. The Gold Crown. As I said before, the people who buried this gold, and the people associated with it, of course, were nomadic. They moved from place to place frequently, but they still managed to safely store and transport this crown because it was important to them. But how do you take something as delicate as this and transport it without damaging it? Or more specifically, how did they do it? Well, they made it collapsible. No, seriously, you guys, this is a foldable, collapsible gold crown. I kid you not. It goes from this to this, which can lay flat between two cushions or perhaps some folded pieces of cloth. How great is that? If you've tuned into my streams or you watch lots of my videos, you know that I continually say that people in the past were just as intelligent as people are today, and this crown is one of the examples I love to use to really hammer that point home. Whether people are nomadic or sedentary, they will always find ingenious ways to transport the things they care about. Okay, so I will be the first to admit that this storage building is much larger than the other buildings in this area. I'm pretty sure it's at least four times bigger than my house, and it's, it's actually probably bigger than that. But I've been looking into what I'm going to need for copper and iron smelting, and oh boy, is it a lot of stuff. To, to, to make my facilities for copper and iron smelting close to what we'd need in reality, I mean. I know that in Minecraft I can just smelt them in a furnace, but this is an archaeologist's guide, so we're gonna talk about the archaeology and build up the infrastructure for actually being able to do these things. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. It helps this video reach more people, and honestly, who wouldn't want to learn about that collapsible gold crown? Like, seriously. If you're wanting to learn more about copper or the copper or bronze ages, check out this video here, or if you're curious about iron and the iron age, you can head on over here. That's all from me for today. Thank you all for tuning in, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye!